hello everyone, it's a pleasure to see all the people that have came for the talk. So today we'll be discussing uh, an OpenShift uh, cluster deployed on uh, one bare metal server. Uh, my name is uh, Tatiana and I work at Red Hat France at uh, Telco SA Partners team. Uh, so uh, I participate in uh, two activities mainly. I uh, actively contribute to a uh, distributed CI tool, which is a very powerful CI written in Ansible, and we use it to install uh, OpenShift on uh, bare metal. And uh, I also collaborate a lot with Red Hat Telco partners uh, on their real life uh, 5G workloads. Uh, so it's basically to help them to install uh, OpenShift on their private labs to. Uh, install the workload to help them pass the tests and certify and automate all this using uh, DCI. Uh, so here is the agenda of today's presentation. Uh, in two words, we will be addressing some um, pretty niche uh, use case, which is really often in practice. Uh, this use case lies right in between uh, the local OpenShift distributions and uh, uh, the enterprise solution uh, with the clusters on uh, many physical nodes. So it's something that you really often see in practice then your application is too large uh, to be uh, fully tested on uh, the local uh, OpenShift distribution with one node but uh, uh, is not ready enough uh, to go to the full cluster and we have a hardware shortage. So we'll be discussing this problem in more details uh, in five minutes. I will be uh, proposing the solution to this problem to deploy open ship on one but large environmental server. And uh, we will be going through all the hardware requirements, what will be created, and uh, then we will move to how exactly to do it. Um, I will again uh, show you how easy and seamlessly it can be done with uh, DCI and uh, I will show you some demo, a bit accelerated, no worries here. And then we will move uh, right in the conclusion. So that's uh, the plan for today. Uh, let's uh, really start from the motivation. Uh, as I told you, the problem is very often in practice. So we work with telco partners, we see that a lot. So usually a 5G application is not something small. It's usually something really demanding. Um, you can see a lot of situations that you need at least two workers running because of some uh, particularity of the traffic, uh, because of some uh, situations um, with the application design itself. So you're not really in the situation and you could test uh, the application on the local distribution. So you really need something uh, pretty decent. On the other side, again, uh, it's a telco use case, but you could imagine here any application which uh, requires a particular hardware. For telco, it's often, for example, SRLV cards, uh, some security requirements, some data protection, uh, which they are not yet compliant on the test stage. So this is something that uh, imposes you to test this large application in-house. And uh, as usual nowadays, you have a shortage of available hardware, so just a one bare metal server. And you have basically a choice, you can wait while other servers will arrive and you could start testing. Or you could maybe do something with one bare metal server that you have right now. So that is actually the solution that I'm going to discuss during this talk. So what we are going to do like in general. So we are going to deploy our OpenShift cluster on fully virtual uh, cluster. So what does it mean fully virtual? It means that uh, we will be um, creating the nodes uh, of OpenShift uh, as uh, virtual machines and we will be connecting these virtual machines by virtual networks. So all this we will be doing using the uh, Reboot Libraries API and all this will run on one single bare metal server. So all virtual machines and all virtual networks will be in server solution. So I just want to emphasize that since the beginning, all this is in server. So VMs are in server and networks as well. So it's nothing like uh, you really have to do a complex job uh, with switches and network setup. No, all this is in server and all this will be running uh, spawned up by C++ playbook and will be destroyed the same way. So it's really 
convenient and uh, simple solution. Okay. Uh, so let's start uh, right from the beginning. So we'll be first discussing our hardware requirements. Okay, so we'll be running on one uh, bare metal uh, server, but how large uh, the server should be. So what really, uh, what do we need um, from the point of view of hardware and uh, which uh, cluster from uh, nodes point of view we could uh, get in here. So here I'd like really to provide you two examples uh, hitting in the two extreme test cases. One is uh, both are real life situations, okay? So all this is tested, it's not a fury, all this is running. So here you have um, sort of a uh, real life uh, example for a large application on enterprise lab. So it's not a cheap solution. You can see that it's almost uh, one, uh, 150 gigabyte of RAM here. So it's really expensive. Uh, it's a really enterprise solution. And this is what uh, is running on the lab of one of our partners. Um, basically, the problem here is with the workers, you see. Every worker has to get uh, 32 gigabyte of RAM and uh, 32 vCPUs and that is really something that is a uh, requirement of the application. The application is pretty heavy, it uh, works with 5G traffic in a very particular way. So that is really uh, the bare minimum requirement for the tests that we want to run in this lab. So this example basically shows you that even this didn't one um, bare metal server, you still can get a pretty decent level of testing and pretty high level of confidence with what uh, you are going. So that's one example. But okay, it's really expensive. You see how many RAM it's really enterprise lab. Maybe you have a home lab or you have uh, a simple solution or you want to try it. Uh, without uh, really spending all the money. So we are providing uh, a second example. Again, it's uh, tested and practiced so what you can run. Uh, again, I'm providing you the exact hardware in case if you'd like to try it on your own, if you have your home lab or something. Uh, so here again, we have two workers, but this time the workers are much more decent. So they are uh, really more smooth and they are more uh, let's say they are Muslim and uh, you have just uh, 8 uh, gigabyte of RAM and 8 vCPUs per worker but still you have two workers. So it's an example of the application that could uh, really go uh, on the minimum resources but just requires to be uh, somehow a bit more distributed. So this is what you can do in your basically home lab uh, like um, 56 gigabyte of RAM, it's uh, pretty decent. Uh, in real life, to be honest, we are running it on uh, 70 gigabyte, but still it's uh, tested. Uh, we see that uh, we really could go with this uh, solution, not only on really expensive, on huge servers, but on small home server as well. So here we just discussed uh, basically the nodes. We discussed what we are going to get as a uh that uh, will be running on our cluster, but also need to discuss one last step, how we will be connecting these machines in between. So we really need to create some networks uh, that will be connecting our virtual machines that we created on the server. So again, I want to emphasize it again, it's in-server networks. These are networks created with Rebuild APIs. So it's not like something that you have to do, uh, setting up switches and so on. It's something that we will will be done for you by the Virt API and we will be creating uh, two networks. So one is provisioning network, we will be using uh, OCP API installer here, so it will be used uh, to bootstrap VPNs. And um, the second network is bare metal network, which will be used uh, to connect all the nodes. Uh, uh, bare metal network here is in red. And you see that uh, we will be uh, automatically creating a router for external NATED connection. So basically your server will have um, some sort of uh, outside uh, connectivity, so you will get the possibility to go uh, from your cluster to outside. You will not have possibility with this setup to go from outside to the cluster, but this is fine, this is testing setup, it's uh, even sort of additional protection uh, for your 
situation. Uh, so, bare metal network will uh, also provide uh, a basic uh, DHCP and the DNS config, and every VM will get um, uh, an IP address from uh, from DHCP pool. So we discussed what we are going to create. We are going to create nodes as DMs, and we are going to create two virtual networks uh, that will be connecting these nodes. Uh, so the next question is how to do it. Uh, and uh, here, again, uh, it's a time for some advertisement of uh, distributed CI tools. So here you have uh, a DCI logo. And uh, as before, it's really a powerful tool which is combining the goodies of CI with the goodies of Ansible. So it's CI that could uh, do everything Ansible can. You could install OpenShift on Fire Metal, you could install your workloads, you can do whatever you want uh, as uh, you are working with Ansible, and you can do whatever you want as it's uh, CI. So it's really uh, the good things from both worlds united together, so it's really cool. Uh, so what we do, we deploy and shift, uh, automate the deployment of workload, run various tests, and even propose the certification out of box. So it's uh, it's nice. I like I like this tool uh, for sure. I'm using it every day, and uh, it offers a lot of flexibility. So here we will be using DCI in two steps. First step will be to create. Uh, the full virtual cluster that I discussed right before, virtual machines and networks. And all this will be done in one step. So we'll be basically just running one Ansible playbook until we'll be creating everything. It will be creating both nodes, networks, routers, everything. So we'll get fully uh, pretty ready virtual cluster. And then the second thing, we will be choosing the version to deploy this cluster and we will be running it. API installer, which is available out of DCI, I probably did not mention. In uh, out of DCI, we have uh, basically all installers available: UPI, API, DI, AI. So <coughs> here, for the sake of the presentation, I'm just using the API, but it's not uh, the limitation. We have a lot of, a lot of stuff available. Uh, let's go to the requirements. Uh, so, what you will need to install. Uh, from software uh, point of view, so you'll need to get uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux just to get all of your dependencies uh, to be coherent. Uh, you simply install DCI, it's, uh, this DNF install, it's, uh, it's easy to do. And uh, then the important thing here is uh, to enable nested KVM on the jump host on your own. Um, bare metal server. Why would you need a nested key? And this is a particular moment, so but this is important one, so let me spend some minute on that. So uh, we will be using OCP API then. Uh, so you see here we have a provisional machine, and uh, you probably know that uh, OCP API works uh, starting from um, creating the bootstrap VM. Since uh, provisioner is already VM, and bootstrap VM will be created within VM, this way we will be creating VM within VM. Uh, so what we need here is uh, really enable nested key VM uh, for the sake of uh, uh, make this uh, setup work. So here it's a really important moment. Not all uh, hardware allows that, but nowadays most of uh, staff will have this opportunity. So this is one of the requirements. We will need nested key VM to make this solution work. So now that's all about the dependencies, and uh, we are ready really to go more into this stuff. Uh, so we are ready to really go into the customization. So what I'm showing you here is not something that you have to write from scratch. The template is available within the DCI. You have uh, a lot of samples and examples. So basically what you will have to do is that you will have to take this template, which is already here, in the various combinations, you will have a lot of comments and uh, a lot of various situations that already uh, thought about. Uh, what you will have to do, you will have just to take this template and customize it to provide description of your cluster that we just discussed before. So essentially to provide the description of your networks and to provide the description of your hosts. On this slide you see the part one, uh, which is addressing mainly the networks. And uh, you are providing here 
the addresses for ARP, CPI, DNS, if so all the standard stuff you have in here. And uh, here are our two networks. So you see you have uh, bare metal, you have this uh, DHCP range in which uh, you will have your APIs allocated, and you have this uh, NATED mode uh, for the outside connection. Okay. And then uh, you will get a provisioning network, uh, which is uh, uh, will be used uh, basically for VMs bootstrapping. Then uh, another part of the setup, uh, here you have hosts. Okay, so here you start to describe really node by node what will be happening here. So here I'm really emphasizing uh, the network part. So for every node, you are precising to which uh, networks this node will be connected. So here I'm providing provisioning and bare metal and um, just check it out. It's a nice feature for bare metal network. I'm precising here MAC. It's uh, not mandatory, but it's a nice feature because then you could basically pin your MAC address uh, in the bare metal network and it's uh, really easy to debug uh, if you do further the application debug. It's not like every time you assign arbitrary MAC addresses. It's uh, really pinned here and uh, it's a nice feature, uh, I think. So that's uh, about the networks. Uh, the second part is, uh, yes, uh, we have to describe the nodes. As we discussed before, there will be some trade-offs between how much you want to spend on the lab and how much you can get in terms of RAM and CPU. And basically, once you decided this, once you created the nice table uh, with your setup, uh, what you need to do is just to customize uh, uh, the memory, the CPU, the disk size. You could uh, also, it's not, uh, I did not show it here, you could also add a second disk for the storage, for example, for the workers if you have some uh, stuff for the application. So, and for sure you use uh, KVM driver as, um, as a base. Uh, so that's what you will be doing, not just for provision cost, but uh, basically for all the nodes. So you really customize node by node. You can make uh, worker one differ from worker two, and uh, you can do anything you need. Uh, and, uh, Again, I want to say that it's uh, coming out from templates, so basically what you have to write here is just uh, some numbers. It's not like you're running this uh, cool YAML file from scratch, it's uh, you are basically taking whatever is already here and you are customizing the template. So now what we essentially prepared, we prepared our Ansible inventories. So I told you that DCI is written in Ansible, so this uh, YAML file describing the cluster, that was our inventories. So what we are going to do, we are going to create our uh, virtual cluster with just one command, so it will be uh, running uh, Ansible playbook, taking playbook uh, review up, and uh, providing an inventory with the description of all nodes and so what this uh, playbook will be doing, it will be creating all the nodes, uh, provisioning node, uh, free masters to workers, to networks, provisioning and per metal. And uh, it will also do one nice thing for us, uh, it will generate the hosts file uh, to be used later for OCP IP installation. So it will be just creating the cluster, everything from scratch, and it will be also generating uh, the description of this cluster in uh, the form which is understandable by uh, IPI installer later. And uh, here is the demo. I hope that uh, video will work. Let me try it out. Uh, so basically, uh, this is uh, a bit accelerated installation. In real life, it takes about uh, 10 minutes. So what this part is doing, it's uh, creating from scratch uh, this um, uh, virtual cluster. So what I'm showing you here is this um, uh, inventory file and I'm just going through all the nodes. Uh, you see it's not, uh, it's not too, too large. Uh, so once I customize the, the inventory, I'm firing my Ansible playbook. And now here it's uh, accelerated in five times, so we need really installing the, uh, our virtual cluster here this in uh, two minutes. Uh, so again, what it will be doing? It will be creating all the nodes, it will be creating all the networks, and it will be generating a hosts file that will be used later for 
uh, OCP IP installation. Uh, here I'm going uh, to cheat a bit and uh, move right in the end of the installation uh, just to show you how it will go. Um, so let me just uh, move again. So here, uh, what you see up for that. So I really wanted to come to this part. Then the cluster is already installed, and um, I'm showing you uh, what was finally created. So here you see this virtual command, I'm highlighting the nodes that were created, and I'm highlighting the networks and the port file. So it was uh, a bit too short, so I think I'm going to uh, do it uh, a bit in more details on the next slide of it's running the video. So. I think they are good. Uh, so here you see basically the screenshots from the previous output just uh, to check them out uh, a bit more carefully. So uh, here you have a list of all the nodes created. You see uh, provision cost running and uh, the other nodes uh, which are shut off for the moment, they will be uh, powered on during the OCP installation later. Uh, and we have uh, the networks. Again, these are in-server networks. You see uh, they were automatically created by the playbook and they could be automatically destroyed the same way without doing no harm and without messing up this uh, uh, network. Also, it's an uh, important thing since we are using the netted connection to outside, uh, it's pretty safe. So you do not uh, mess up by adding this uh, additional uh, uh, DHCP server. You will be just safe, you will be within your cluster you could only go outside and nobody will come from um, uh, from outside to your cluster to, to take IP address. There will be no mess up. It's, it's a safe network configured. It's uh, really nice from this point of view. So you have two networks, but they are safe. They are within the cluster. It's, uh, it's really cool from this point of view. Um, so now what? Uh, we have our virtual cluster. We need uh, now to run the last step. We need to uh, deploy an open shift on that cluster. So what we do now, uh, so we essentially will need uh, three files. So the host file, which is a description of our cluster uh, for OCP API, uh, is already generated by uh, DCI playbook with your tab. Uh, config is uh, a file if you uh, need to add uh, some uh, DCI configurations to get it displayed in DCI UI. It's basically a way to nicely display all Ansible logs at once. Uh, we do it uh, with our partners basically to share uh, the installation and um, uh, to help them with the debug. And uh, the only thing you have to customize really is uh, settings. As before, settings is uh, a template and you don't have to write it on your own, you just have to Dream some things. Uh, here you could uh, just provide the name of your lamp to provide uh, the information that you are installing an OpenShift and uh, to choose uh, the OCP version to install. So here I'm choosing uh, 4.12 and that's enough. So all this, uh, all this stuff, uh, how for quick is already generated for you. You choose the OCP version and uh, you fire the installation uh, using DCI uh, CTA. DCI CTL, we installed before with DNF package, so all this is uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm not uh, showing you a demo of uh, OpenShift API installation, it's uh, 40 minutes and it will, it's just a standard uh, API installation, it will not add um, a lot of value here. What I want you to show is um, the final result. I want you to show how it turned out uh, to be. So. Uh, we get our cluster installed on our virtual uh, cluster. You see here we chose um, uh, 4.12 OpenShift, so it's uh, 1.25 uh, Kubernetes. And uh, to interact with the cluster, uh, DCI already generated for you the special folder, cluster configs, in which uh, you have all the required binaries. And you have a few config to interact uh, with your so you have everything in one folder generated during uh, the IP installation out of uh, DCI. So 
picture is uh, what you got finally. Uh, these are the same notes that we've seen uh, like several slides before uh, as a virtual cluster. And uh, uh, we have uh, our three masters and two workers of, uh, and uh, coming. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, so I want again to emphasize that we're addressing some sort of uh, this gap situation which is really often in practice then we do not um, uh, then we have application which is large enough to fit uh, and can't fit uh, in the tests with the local OCP distributions but uh, we don't have uh, enough hardware or enough budget or enough readiness to already do this uh, full enterprise cluster with many nodes so this uh, pretty niche problem is pretty often, and uh, what we propose here is to fill this gap by uh, instantiating for testing uh, the solution of OCP on virtual cluster. Again, I want to emphasize here it's not uh, a production ready solution, it's not uh, something that will give you the best performance and stuff. Uh, some of our partners, they are still running um, some basic performance tests, to be honest, but it's not something that you want to really do. Um, it's mostly a testing solution, it's not production-ready solution in many senses, but it just allows you to start uh, testing more quickly and it also allows you to start some testing just having one server. And uh, yeah, I want to... Uh, also add a bit of uh, advertisement of DCI tool here which uh, we work on our team so it's it's a really nice tool it's uh, CI written in Ansible it can allow you to do a lot of things out of box um, I invite you to check it out it's a quite nice tool um, we are really open to the contributions if you'd like to try it out if you have some particular test cases we are really open to uh, to the community needs and we're actively working with uh, 5G telco partners so the tool is really evolving really fast and um, it includes um, a lot of new installers, a lot of new possibilities, we're constantly evolving, we're working a lot on the tests so it's a uh, really nice and um, good uh, open shift community uh, so here I'm providing you all the links just in case if you'd like to check it out uh, so, concerning this talk, OCP cluster on Libreer, I'm providing you a source code of Ansible role that I just used because maybe you would like to check in technical details exactly how it was done. Uh, I also provide you a link to configuration templates and samples if you'd like to try it out. So, you maybe would like to check uh, ready solutions out of box and just uh, customize them. And uh, here is blog post on this topic, so if you want uh, to get this talk, but in more technical details, like really uh, with the whole configuration out of box, with the whole discussion, just uh, check it out, you will see it's uh, the way more extended here, I'm a bit limited in time, so uh, check it out. And uh, here some information about DCI if you'd like to get started, so it's an introduction, documentation, and we also have um, a nice blog that uh, we are trying to uh, keep up to date. We are uh, writing the articles. Don't hesitate to check it out. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, so I think uh, we have two minutes for the questions. Questions? Don't hesitate. Let me just I, have a, I have a question uh, about the Mm. Last year, we have, uh, yes. can we provide the uh, DSCP, bootstrap DSCP service by the provisional uh, VM directly? Uh, mm. Yes, basically that's, uh, that's what we do here. We have uh, basically two, uh, two DHCP. We have one uh, DHCP for provisioning and one DHCP for bare metal. So you have them uh, right here. Uh, I mean, can we um, can we provide the DCP directly by the provisioner, not the uh, pro, not the listed VM? Uh, you mean um, uh, you want to probably want to provide DHCP for bare metal network then? No. Is that um, correct? Um, 
I'm, I'm just uh, trying to understand what is the need. Uh, you already have uh, DHCP on your on your cluster and you want to use it both for in cluster connectivity and uh, for the IPs of VM. Understand. Uh, yes, you can. It will be uh, a bit more challenging for you in the sense that uh, in this situation, you see you have uh, router and you have uh, the external connectivity managed tool. If you already have uh, DHCP here, probably it will be exposed to outside network. So in this case, you are not uh, protected uh, for the situations that uh, um, for example, some meshes from outside could come to your server and get the IP addresses out of there. That's uh, what one, one of the setup I did in the past and it was really painful because we nuke out uh, basically the entire lab of the partner. And so I, I, I do not recommend this, but uh, you can definitely do it. Uh, it's just that you need to be a bit more proficient in the work setup in this case. As I know the last VM is not operational supported. Um, it's just the in public preview. Mm, I'm not sure. Um, you mean uh, the possibility to enable nested KVM? Yeah. This, this you will need anyway if you need if you use uh, IPI setup, uh, if you use uh, OCP IPI. So uh, yes, it's uh, not um, it's not a recommended production uh, setup. I always emphasize here it's uh, testing stuff. There are a lot of things. Uh, uh, that are not uh, really supported uh, on the production level. So it's just starting from LibVirt API to be honest. Uh, LibVirt API is not something that you can run in the production having the full support. So yes, it's a testing setup. And it can also be for a solution for the customer, right? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, uh, since to, 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 not, to not use uh, nested key, yeah? I mean, you um, you have mentioned that this is a solution for the FMD tech um, case. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a solution for customer, right? Yes. Yes, it's a solution for large five uh, G workload for the testing. Yes. So even if in tactic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do not hesitate to come uh, to come later. We could discuss in more details. I see that you are hands-on the solution, so maybe I will uh, provide you more details uh, on your particular uh, Any more questions? Any other questions? Um, yeah. So the the installer controls provisions the nodes for IDMI or Redfish. If I understand correctly, how do you? How do you provide the IDMI Redfish interface to the VMs? Uh, we are not using Redfish here, we are using VDMS. Uh, but uh, there are some solutions with Redfish. Uh, you could check with one of my colleagues, I will give you one. Um, any other questions? Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.